I'm Eugene Brownwald, and I'm a cardiologist at the Harvard Medical School and at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And I am here to tell you something about a compendium uh, of uh, papers which uh, are being published in circulation research. And the subject is the cardiomyopathies. Now, the cardiomyopathies uh, have been uh, a sort of uh, stepchild in cardiology because the other um, known types of cardiovascular disorders are congenital heart disease, valvular heart disease, uh, congestive heart failure, um, hypertensive heart disease, and all the ones that are familiar to you. Cardiomyopathy has been sort of in the corner, and it's been really occurs because uh, there have been um, um, uh, the, the number of patients with any single cardiomyopathy is modest. It doesn't come close to those that I've mentioned. Uh, it doesn't come close to coronary disease. But when you put them all together, uh, then uh, the cardiomyopathies uh, form a significant uh, um, number of uh, instances. The prevalence when all of them are placed together is, is quite large. Now, what has happened um, in the past few years is there has been an explosion of new information about cardiomyopathies, and that's what we're trying to capture in this compendium. My colleague is Dr. Ali Marion of Baylor uh, College of Medicine, and um, um, the two uh, principal areas where progress has been made has been in genetics and in imaging. Um, and uh, that's where um, uh, the frontiers lie. Um, increasingly, we see uh, that cardiomyopathies are uh, inherited. Some are inherited uh, with several genes being involved others a huge number of genes, but the genetic component of cardiomyopathy is very powerful. And I think we're getting to the point where uh, uh, genetic testing uh, is becoming uh, an important diagnostic technique, at least for one of the cardiomyopathies, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and the others are falling uh, close behind, particularly uh, um, uh, right ventricular uh, dysplasia. Uh, the other area where uh, tremendous progress has been made has been in imaging. And uh, new forms of imaging, um, the application of new technology to, uh, um, uh, to echocardiography, for example, is very important um, using speckle tracing it's now possible to um, define a uh, condition that's called cardi uh, that's called strain, myocardial strain, in which uh, there is movement of um, uh, specific spots uh, on the myocardium, and uh, uh, you can see early changes uh, that uh, uh, foretells the future development of an overt cardiomyopathy. The other uh, particularly important imaging area is um, some of the advances in uh, magnetic resonance imaging, um, which uh, show both anatomic and uh, uh, perfusion abnormalities. They show, for example, in cardiomyopathies, interstitial fibrosis, um, uh, an increase in extracellular connective tissue, um, which is a prominent part of several cardiomyopathies. And I think that uh, early MRI uh, is predictive. Now, therapy has also come a long way, although it is clearly behind the basic sciences here. I think that um, uh, there are patients, many patients with cardiomyopathy who um, are at risk of sudden cardiac death uh, due to ventricular fibrillation. And of course, once that risk is defined, 
this can be prevented with uh, the implantation of an implanted cardioverta defibrillator. And I think that has saved uh, many lives. I think other uh, uh, techniques uh, uh, for cardiac myopathies in some instances includes uh, surgical uh, sept septal myomectomies. Um, that's a, an invasive procedure, of course. It's a surgical procedure. But also in the cardiac catheterization lab, there are interventions uh, of, um, of uh, um, blocking the septal artery in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients where the septum is greatly enlarged and is responsible for obstruction. So it's a, um, um, a large field. There's a lot of uh, uh, new information in it. And our goal with this is uh, to stimulate people, is to bring them up to speed. The readers of circulation research are largely scientists, but they're cardiovascular scientists and they want cardiovascular uh, um, medicine to improve. Uh, but this will bring them up to date. It's also read by many clinical cardiologists and clinical cardiologists should understand the basic science behind the conditions that they treat every day. Uh, so we hope that this uh, compendium uh, will be found uh, useful. Certainly, it's been uh, a very educational experience for me, and uh, I hope it'll be an educational experience for our readers. Thank you.